Hello Visual Effects people, I'm AK and this is Fluid Ninja Live 1.7. This is the first episode of a tutorial series which I'm going to make uh, during the next few days. I would say let's start with the project homepage. That's a good starting point. Here, uh, links are going to be updated and you will find everything that is needed to keep yourself updated first. Here's Ninja Demo, which is a runtime precompiled EXE, 150 megabytes, which you could download even if you don't have the Ninja Live project on your computer. So you could test it for free. Second, uh, there is a video capture of the same demo. It's a large YouTube video, basically a level run through, which is demonstrating all the recently added levels. So, both available here at the project homepage. Most importantly, here's the updated manual, and you could find the latest version numbers and the update and support, stuff like that. But most importantly, uh, all chapters have been slightly uh, redesigned, simplified, and there is this chapter 29 which takes you to the key things what is new in Live 1.7. Here you could see eight points. We are quickly going through these and going to be explained in details later on in other tutorials. So, um, first I'm jumping to the project. Um, one important notice that almost uh, half of the levels have been updated in 1.7. It's a major update. And these levels that have been updated have a name tag, Live 1.7, in their names. So in case you're opening the project and you see this name tag, uh, you could open any of these levels. And usually, at the level starting point, you see this big yellow text explaining what has been updated on that very level, reference uh, to stages and parameters and stuff like that. So one way to get no, uh, to figure out what is new is to go through uh, levels, click through levels and, and figure out these uh, new stages and read the information texts placed on level. So that is the advised way of going through the whole thing. And the other way around is using the manual. So we are in tw chapter 29. So what is new in Live 1.7? First, driving other systems directly. Let's have a look at a legacy level. I'm in tutorial per levels. And, uh, oh sorry, not tutorial, but use cases. And here is this guy a poor, lonely uh, use case number six, tagged as obsolete, which means uh, it's a demonstration of the past times. If I'm clicking on the Ninja Live actor and going to the details panel, I could see that uh, Ninja is writing the simulation buffers to on-disk render targets. You see this huge list of already uh, pre-made, prefabricated render targets. And in the old times, Ninja was writing all the sim buffers to these render targets and say, I would like to select uh, this uh, water surface and figure out what material it uses. Well, here we go. And this material is set to read the same render targets. That was the old classic method. Ninja writing render targets and these target systems are reading the render targets. Also, if you open up the level blueprint, you could feel, uh, see the, um, the, how the parameters have been forwarded in the old times. Uh, we were capturing uh, the pound position, converting it to a vector and finally uh, setting vector parameters on the material. That is how word space materials have been working. Now let's have a look at uh, use case level number one, which have been heavily updated. Let me just uh, quickly start it. First is a very plain, simple demonstration of how uh, water could be applied. It's running with almost 500 FPS on an RTX 3080 and uh, it's the 
most simple way how water could be applied. And if you have a look, there is only a single injector here. Looking at the details panel per Ninja Life component, you could see this uh, option draw internal render target is not enabled. So we are not drawing render targets anymore. Instead, we are using uh, primary and secondary output materials. Here the first one is selected, water opaque quiet. So this is a material which we have been providing here at Ninja Live Actor component. And we also have a name tag, C surface. And if I click on the C surface and write the tag filter, you could see that the same tag is applied on this object. So what Ninja does is uh, uh, basically applying this uh, already prepared water material on tagged objects. And this material is working as a dynamic material instance, so it's provided with the render buffers and the parameters and all these, so users don't have to uh, fuzz with level blueprints and parameter collections and uh, render targets, just providing uh, a material and tag objects and it's done. So shortly that is the direct driving and in the project all levels are set to this new method. Of course the whole thing remained downward compatible which means you could use the old method and in some cases it might be needed as well. A second, improved word space motion. Um, not going to explain this in details but there is a dedicated level which is level tutorial level 32 and if you visit this level there are a few stages which explain how things were in the past and how we are doing now so this is like ninja 1.0 local container just sitting there a static container and interacting with objects uh -huh, this is like ninja 1.4 1.5 1.6 so the container is moving which is fine and uh, it's forwarding uh, the velocity and position information to the simulation. So you, it's seemingly, uh, while the container is sticking to the moving object, the fluid is behaving properly. Now have a look at this. You see this weird motion? Like uh, we have divided the whole world to a grid, to cells, and the container is jumping on these cells. Now why is it necessary? Well, it's not obvious for first, but if you have a look at this uh, thing here, it's like, a, I call this a simple painter. Because we are not running a fluid sim, just uh, drawing a, a thick line. And it's following this yellow ball. As you could see, uh, there is a strong blurring. Which means, um, uh, every frame, every time we offset the simulation buffer, we are doing a texture interpolation, and it is accumulating, and we are losing uh, information. Now, if you go here, you could see that uh, the thing remains sharp because we do this interpolation only a few times and you could see this in practice. That is uh, stage 7. And as you could see, our poem is moving in word space and the simulation container is following it in word space but with this strange quantized or uh, discrete step movement. Uh, this is the new feature here, and if I select the Ninja Live container and go to the details panel, I could find it under Live Interaction. The bottom six options, starting with Trace Mesh moving in word space. By the way, do you see these large tooltips? Um, I advise you to read through. Anyway, if you just click on this Enum, this roll down menu, you could figure out. Uh, different ways of following objects if we should quantize or not quantize the movement anyway this is under the hood so this is what is happening when uh, when we run ninja 1.7 all right and there's many sub cases for example if you have a moving container that is following the pound uh, could you lock it to the horizontal plane so not following the pound vertically well yes all explained read the on level placed texts and there is many more let's move on to the next feature i'm going back to the pdf 
and it's 0.3. It says local solver combined with a global pattern generator. Well, yeah, um, in the old times, we had this problem. You see, this is the simulation area, this red one. And it is fine, uh, but how do I make an infinite uh, sea surface with this one? Well, let me go back to use case level number one, because that is a very simple, perfect demonstration for this. As you could see, there is already a wavy uh, water pattern here. I'm not even running the fluid simulation, I'm, I'm just in the editor. Now, what is happening? Well, now I'm picking the output material by selecting Ninja, going to the details panel, live component, and in the live generic options, here's the secondary op material. Now, I hope that uh, it's going to be visible on the video capture, but so I have this material instance opened, and I close all parameters so you could see the parameter groups, color, flow map, mesh distort, normals, and most importantly, tile map. This is a huge parameter group. You could define two maps, various uh, offsets in space and time. And by using these offsets and providing the system with noises, you have a basic, simple generator. It is completely independent from the fluid simulation. It's just offsetting patterns and it's generating uh, whatever you would like to. Because, um, well, let's move on to another experimental level. And it is called the Sand Painter. It's very simple. But again, the same generator is used. So, in this case, uh, the, the sand dunes have been generated with, the, with a similar base material. Well, with the same base material as the water. It's just that the waves are not moving. That's how sand <laughs> dunes work. So, this base material have been constructed to create all kind of environments. Uh, by the way, this key output material is located here. Output materials per base materials and you could see ninja output word space generic. This is the most important key asset in the whole updated package. Okay, uh, let's move on to the next point. Number four, driving multiple systems with a single fluid sum. Well, yeah. Say uh, I'm loading use case level. Uh, yeah, it's a bit more complicated scene here, number 14B. Let me just quickly start it. As you can see, a lot of things going on. Obviously, we have a simulation, but we see particles. And if I turn down the uh, lights, you might notice that there is a slight uh, volumetrix above the water surface. Also, uh, the foam. Oh, let me load another level. Stormy, yeah, that this this level makes the the volumetrics even more obvious. So you could see uh, these these moving uh, uh, waves of fog above the sea surface. Well, we have a fluid simulation going on in this actor called water, and this basic two-dimensional fluid simulation is driving three things. First, like uh, on use case level number one. It is running the water surface. But, as you could see, we have a volume smoke component in this actor. So the same uh, simulation buffer, the same simulation data is forwarded to the volumetric system. And we have a Niagara component. Oh, not one, two Niagara components, bubbles and splash. Oh, by the way, what are bubbles for? Well, if I get down under water, I could have bubbles <laughs> by steering the surface and they are uh, driven by the same motion vectors as uh, this uh, thing on the water surface up here. So, we have been driving volumetrix and particles and the surface itself, and all uh, by using this same technology. Oh, let me just uh, check the components. So, you could see we have been providing Ninja with tags. We have been tagging the volume component, we have been tagging the Niagara component, and the water surface as well, sea surface. So, systems, uh, outer systems tagged, and Ninja is applying materials and parameters to these systems. Shortly, uh, five, number five, we are back in the PDF, improved simple mode. 
First, let me visit the original simple painter level, which is tutorial level number seven. And here there is this yellow text guiding you where the new levels are. But the point is that uh, the simple painter has been here since live 1.0. And the idea is that why should we run a fluid simulation in case we would like to just track objects in space? Well, uh, the simple painter is very efficient and uh, if I move on to one of the tutorial levels, say the sand beach, um, you could see uh, my footprints. I'm leaving this uh, track in the sand, but yeah, let me move on. And so please notice that this is a simple painter, it's not running any fluid simulation. We are just uh, tracking uh, the palm, feet, two bones, and using this uh, to stamp this uh, pattern. Uh, I could also draw here. Stamp this pattern on the sand. So this is what Simple Painter is made for. Uh, there are so many applications. If I'm just visiting uh, use case level number 11, is demonstrating how to drive particles with fluids and these are nice but let's just visit the most uh, humble stage here which is stage one and we are using a simple painter here uh, to drive particles so we're not even running a fluid sim we're just getting a brush position and velocity and we could achieve almost similar results but as with a fluid sim, but as a very cheap and efficient way of uh, controlling systems. So simple painter is important. We could talk about this later on. Uh, we are back in the PDF modularity. Well, uh, Ninja Life component is here for a long time. Um, in case uh, you're visiting any of these uh, tutorial levels, you, you could, well, let's say to Let's say use case level 10 would be fine. You see, uh, here is this uh, the torch bearer palm. Let me start this quickly. So we have a torch here running a fluid sim and flames and stuff. But if you check the pawn in editor, there is seemingly no simulation container attached. And the thing is, if you check the pawn, we have a ninja live component added. So we could add fluid simulation component to our actors. But this is an old story. Uh, the new story here, uh, modularity, that we could construct our own actors. If I go to um, yeah, the complicated level, again, it will be fine for all purposes. And I select Ninja Live Voter again. And I go to the details panel. So you could see we have this volume smoke component. This is completely new, created for Live 1.7. And we have the classic Unreal Niagara component, all added to the same actor. And Ninja, the Ninja Live component is controlling these other components. So the thing is that I have been building an actor with my custom components and added a fluid simulation component that is driving volumetrics and particles and stuff. That is what I call modularity. Two-way data flow. Well, with Niagara, uh, we have been able to drive Niagara with uh, fluid simulation for a long time, again, maybe live 1.1, and it's level 20, which was the classic demonstration for this. So this, <laughs> this was our first Niagara test almost a year ago. And here we have extended this with a simple painter. So this is the case when we are using the fluid simulation to drive particles, but this could be done inversely. Uh, and I'm loading use case level 12. Greg Ressler joined the Fluid Ninja developing crew. Very, very nice guy. I really like to work with him. You know, we never seen each other, but it's like a, a pen pal. We spend a lot of time together on Discord. And so he built this level completely, demonstrating his uh, new Niagara modules and these modules are using a grid 2D setup to capture particles and forward the information to Ninja so basically we are using particles a stream of particles 
to drive fluid simulation. And this is Greg's work. I would like to thank him a lot. And this is demonstrated on use case level 12. By the way, I'm just going back to the browser. The runtime demo seen on this link is also the work of Greg. And again, uh, you spend a lot of time to create this compiled demo. Okay, moving back to the features section. Um, yep. Uh, the final and last feature I'm talking about is tag-based actor tracking. I'm going to explain this in details later on, but in the old times it was... Uh, let me just load the level and let's try to figure that. Okay, here, uh, number 8, Roots, that's an old classic level. So you, we, we have this uh, simulation going on here and we have like uh, these moving objects and pawns and if I click uh, any of these Ninja Live uh, containers and go to the details panel I could see these uh, overlap filters you see physic body, word dynamic and pawn this is what we have been using until now to define what kind of object we would like to interact with now um, from now on we could define tags you see this track actor primitive components with tag and if I would type in uh, any tagged object it would be forcibly tracked uh, indifferently of its uh, collision classes so that's it shortly uh, we have been running through uh, this eight uh, highlighted feature of course many more so again um, the project homepage is a good starting point. Any updates will be shown here. And you could start here. M the manual is again explaining all things in details. The key parameters highlighted with yellow. And again, you could read uh, the level placed text. Just have a look at uh, use case level number one. I mean, there is a book. <laughs> There's a wall. <laughs> it's, a <laughs> it's literally a wall of text here which uh, if you're curious enough you could read uh, so um, this is for now a quick introduction to live 1.7 and uh, since we have been talking about uh, Gregory and, and his help I would like to check in uh, to discord and uh, to the main channel you see these guys on the right uh, major smash box Kimber, alias David and Valentin, and here is Tyler, alias Xeral. So <laughs> you can see the complete uh, list of uh, Ninja developers and, and all the people uh, helping us. And I would like to thank you all for creating the Discord server and uh, maintaining it while I was away developing and doing your stuff, Gregory and Tyler and Seth. And for you all, thank you. So that's it, folks. Uh, I'm saying goodbye, and I will come back with a series of tutorial videos explaining things in details. Thank you, and have a nice VFX time. See you.